this is what we are called for. There is no higher calling. Are you with me? Yeah. Jesus set us free to praise him. He set us free to bring him glory. And we will not deny him. I say we will not deny him. Because if I will not praise him, he can still get somebody to praise him. Are you with me? Amen. If I will not praise him or you will not praise him, he can still raise somebody to praise him. I don't want somebody to take my place. I will bless the Lord at all times. Amen. And his praises shall continually be on my lips. If you believe that you will not deny the praise that Jesus deserved, shout hallelujah. Father, we continue to thank you. I pray that, Father, the spirit of ministering your word will be released upon me. Give me the anointing to communicate your way. That your children will not leave this place the same. But they will be transformed into the image of Christ. Translated into your presence and transfigured into the glory of sons and daughters of God. Amen. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's take our Bible and go to the book of Acts. Acts chapter 1. If you are there, say Amen. You are not there yet. Acts chapter 1. We are reading from verse 9 and or 9 up to 11. Acts Praise God. Praise God. I am excited to preach God's word because I know that heaven and earth shall pass away but God's word will not pass away. The Bible teaches us one of the effects of God's word upon our lives is to produce faith in our heart. Amen. And with faith, nothing will be impossible to us. Amen. This is what Jesus said. All things are possible to those who believe. How can I get that faith? Romans chapter 10 verse 17 says, Faith, the God kind of faith, the faith that moves God, the faith that will move God to move in our lives comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So right now, let us go to Acts chapter one, chapter 1. I'm reading verse 3 and then 9 up to 11. Verse 3, talking about Jesus after his resurrection, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion or suffering by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Let's go to the verse 9. When he had spoken these things, why they beheld or behold him? He was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. While they looked steadfastly towards heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in a white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus. I like that. It's not a new Jesus. It's not another Jesus. This same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. And means the same way that you saw him go in, he will come back in the same way. The life of Jesus as far as the gospel is concerned, was characterized by four main miracles. The first one 
was his birth. The Son of God, or God becoming a human being. That all powerful, almighty God, the one who said, Before Abraham was, I am, will humble himself and took upon him the nature of a human being to enter into the womb of the Virgin Mary to be born. That was a miracle. A miracle that no scientist will be able to explain. Because Jesus was not born by the seed of a man. He was born without man's involvement. That was a miracle. The second miracle was his resurrection from the dead. It was a great miracle that the Son of God will be in the grave for three days and three nights and still come back to life and declare, I am the living one. I was there. Behold, I am alive. And I hold the keys of death and the Hades. That is the second miracle. The third miracle which I am going to talk about today is the ascension of Jesus. Forty days after his resurrection, the Bible says he ascended visibly. He ascended in a body, a body form into heaven. He defies the law of gravity in order to go to heaven. All that I am sharing to you, it was not done in secret. The birth of Jesus was not in secret. His resurrection was not in secret. His ascension was not in secret. And I have news for you. The fourth one will also not be in secret. That is his second coming. He will not come as a wind. The angel, the two angels said, he will come back in the same way. You saw him going up. As somebody called me this week, he said, she, not he, she said, looking at what is happening in our world today, how the fulfillment of the prophecy of Jesus concerning Israel, when you see that the Gentiles are surrounding, coming against this nation, then we should know that the time is near. Then this wonderful sister said, even though I don't go to church, but I am ready, I say, don't fool yourself. If you are born again, you become part of the body of Christ. And the church is the only physical body of Christ on this earth. You can say that I belong to the spiritual body of Christ, but have no, have no respect, regard, or participation in the body, in the physical body. If you belong to him, you will belong to his church. Amen. For he said, I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Amen. I'm speaking to some ministers. You are going through hard times in these days. If the church was built by Jesus, hold your peace. I say hold your peace. The victory is in his hands. Amen. Jesus' church will never die. Amen. Oh, you may go down, but you shall rise again. Amen. For the spirit of resurrection is much, much, much alive in the body of Christ. In the church, we shall rise again. Somebody say we shall rise again. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Just three days ago, the world celebrated the ascension of Jesus to heaven. That was 40 days after the resurrection. Now, let us see what the Bible says. The Bible says, after Jesus was raised from the dead, he didn't go quietly to heaven. He could have quietly, without anybody's notice, quietly go back to heaven. But that is not what the Bible says. The Bible says, for 40 days, he was still showing himself with many infallible, infallible proofs that he is alive. I say he is alive. Yeah. He 
was seen by Cleopas and his friends. He showed himself in Galilee to his disciples. He showed himself to the twelve when we, they were in Jerusalem. He showed himself specifically to Thomas. He continued to show himself that he is alive. He is not in the grave. And I have news for you. He is going to give you convincing evidence in your own lives that he is not dead, but he is alive. Yeah. He deal the sick to confirm that he is alive. Yeah. He destroyed the works of the devil to confirm that he is alive. Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. He delivered you from that accident to confirm that he is alive. Yeah. Praise God. I have news for you. Because he is alive, that spirit of cardiac arrest will never prevail against you. Yeah. That bronchitis will never prevail is you. Oh, arthritis has to go because Jesus is alive in your life. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. You will never die of cancer as, as long as Jesus is alive. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I said hallelujah. Yeah. Because he is alive, he will move you from glory to glory. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Get ready, your best days are coming. Yeah. I said get ready, your best days are coming. Yeah. Jesus is about to give you a special confirmation that he is alive in your life and that he loves you. Yes. He loves you. Yes. Hallelujah. And as I was coming, he said to me, tell my people that just as I show myself alive, I show myself with convincing proofs that I was alive or I am alive, show to them that your life is going to give testimonies that you are not dead, that you also is alive in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah! Some people are going to see evidence in your own life. I say in your own life. They are going to see the power of God in your life and see and conclude that you are truly a new creation. All the old things are passed away. Everything has become new. God says, I am about to give you special miracle that the people around you will marvel and the only conclusion they will draw is that of a truth. You are not the same. You are really a child of God. You are spiritually alive. I say you are alive in Christ Jesus. The old things are passed away. Everything has become new. Glory. Glory. I'm so glad. Jesus said, as the Father sent me, so I am sending you. As the Father glorify himself in my ministry, in my life, so I will glorify myself in your life. Yeah. In your life. Yeah. He is more than willing to glorify himself in your life. Yeah. The only way you can know how much he loves and cares for you is to give you special evidence in your life. Yeah. In your life. Yeah. As I was telling you, as I was crossing the line, According to what my wife said, they seize everybody's things, but they allow me to go through. Amen. Hallelujah! Yes. This week, my wife gave the message. She said, "The sister said, you mean on the 27, all the things that they were bringing, they seize everything, but to me, I'm just going through. Amen. I'm just going through. That is the evidence that our Lord is alive yes. and He answers prayer. Yes. He answers prayer. Yes. Hallelujah! Yes. Glory, glory." Listen, the only way your joy can be complete in Christ is for him to answer your prayer. Yeah. There is no better way you will get true joy unless he answered, not partial, he answered your prayer fully yeah. that you will be convinced that the Lord is on your side, yeah. that the Lord is with you, that the Lord is for you. Oh, hallelujah. For 40 days, Jesus was giving evidence, was giving convincing proofs. Not just a proof, something that will convince you that he is alive. And then he said, giving many instructions to the disciples before going to heaven. Do you know that God, the Bible teaches us that we were raised together with Christ. When he died, we died with him. According to, the, according to the book of Romans, when he was buried, believers were buried with him. And when he was raised, Ephesians chapter 2, 
Ephesians chapter 2, put it there for us. Listen to this. Ephesians chapter 2. Let me, let me, let me read it here. Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 6. He said, And has raised us up together. Listen, listen, listen. Talking about Christ. He said, And has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. The same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead also raised me and you together with Christ. And when he ascended to heaven, the Bible says we ascended together with him. Amen. What did he go to do? He went and took his place. He sat down at the right hand side of the throne. And the Bible says we sat with him. Why did Jesus why did he sit down? Because he finished his job. Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. Your job is never, if your job is not finished, you don't sit down. Jesus is sitting down at the right hand side of the throne because it is finished. Yeah. He finished his job. Yeah. The only scripture in the New Testament we see Jesus standing was when his servant Stephen was being stoned. That is the only scripture we see Jesus standing. Why? The only time Jesus stand up is when his servants are under attack. Are you with me? Amen. Stephen said to them, I see the Son of God standing at the right hand of God. He stood up because Stephen, Stephen, the faithful disciple, was being attacked. I have news for him. As you follow God faithfully, as you serve God faithfully, I'm not talking about Caesar. I'm talking about being straight with God, being faithful with God. God will stand for you when you come under attack. God will not fold his hands, but he will stand for you. If you will stand up and look back and say, I am a new creation, all the old things are passed away. Everything has become new. I am a child of God. I am the temple in which God dwells by his Holy Spirit. God has promised that he is with me. I leave my, the rest of my life to his glory. I love what he loves. I hate what he hates. Let me tell you, when your moment of attack comes, he will stand for you. He will not abandon you. He will stand. Just as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego display their faith in him. Even in the burning furnace, the Son of God was right there. Yeah. Was right there with them. God will stand with you, stand for you, when you serve him with a faithful heart. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise God. He may not be visibly seen in your life, but he is right there. Yeah. I say he is right there. Yeah. Praise God. So I will talk a little bit about what he went, he went to do. But for the meantime, let me come down a little bit. He said, he gave the disciples many interests. The reason God raised me and you together with Christ is to give us a message for the world. We have a message for the world. And our message is not a message of condemnation, but a message that God loved the world. God doesn't want to destroy the world. God sent his son Jesus Christ that through him the world can be saved. God is reconciling himself to man. God is now making himself available to every human being. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you have done. I don't care where you are spiritually, emotionally. God is waiting to reconcile himself to you. He, he took the step through the sacrifice of Jesus. All that you need to do is to draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Praise God. Somebody ask, why Jesus, after all the wonderful things he did, the miracles that he performed, why did he go to heaven? Why he didn't stay here? If Jesus is here, he will raise the Lazarus. Are you with me? We will not bury any Lazarus. If Jesus is here, he will mix saliva with clay. 
something on the eyes of the blind. And they can wash in the pool and get their sight back. Why? He that multiplied the loaves and the fish. Why he didn't stay here? There will be no need of going to come ever. He will feed us. But listen to what Jesus said. Jesus said, it is expedient. It is so important, so necessary that I have to go. The disciples were sad when he told them that he was about to go. The disciples were feeling sad. But Jesus said, it is so important for me to go. Because if I don't go, the helper will not come. Put it there for us. Go to the book of John chapter 16. John chapter 16, verse 7. John 16, these are the words of Jesus to the disciples. Listen. But I tell you the truth. It is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the counselor, he is talking about the Holy Spirit. Another title for the Holy Spirit is the counselor or our helper. I think that he James used the word helper. He said, the counselor will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. Put it in the King James for me. Here he used the word comforter. He said, for if I, if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. Verse 8. Listen to what he said in the verse 8. And when he is come, let, let, let us go to him and the, and the NIV. But when he comes, he will convict the world of guilt in regard to sin and righteousness and judgment. It is good for your good. Let me tell you, it is for our good for Jesus to be in heaven and the Holy Spirit to be here. Because when Jesus was here in the body, he could not be in many places at the same time. He was limited by the body. If he was in Jerusalem, he could not be in Tel Aviv. That's why when Lazarus was sick, Martha and Mary sent a message to Jesus in Jerusalem. Jesus was late in coming. And when he came, Lazarus was already dead. So what, does, what, what is he saying? He said, it is important for you that I go. Because if I don't go, the comforter, the counselor, the helper will not come. But when I go away, he will come to you. And when he comes, he will glorify me in your lives. The Holy Spirit did not come to dwell in only one place. He came to dwell in the lives of all those who believe in Christ. The Holy Spirit is not limited in one place. Are you with me? The Holy Spirit is everywhere at the same time. That is why it, Jesus said, it is good that he will come. He will come. The Holy Spirit is right now in this house. The Spirit of God is in Tel Aviv. He is in right now. He is in Iloilo. Are you with me? He is in Iloilo right now. Chicago, ministering healing to somebody right now. The Spirit of God is right now in, in Batangas, touching somebody, blessing somebody. The Spirit of God right now is somewhere in Ontario, convicting somebody, giving cancer, strengthening somebody. He is everywhere. Jesus now came back in his Holy Spirit to be in everywhere, to be with every human being. All those who believe at the same time. It is good that he went away. He went away also to take his position at the right hand side of the throne. For what purpose? The Bible says he went to represent us before the throne of God. He is our representative before the throne of God. We have a representative for the first time. A human being is sitting at the right hand side of the throne. He is our representative. What is he doing? The Bible says he is interceding for us. He is interceding for us. He said, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. He said, whenever you are praying, you are talking to the Father in my name, I will take your prayer and intercede for you. He will point, he will open his arms to the Father and say, Father, look at the mark. 
Look at this. This is a proof that I pay the price for her. I pay the price for him. You've got to answer that prayer. You've got to help him. You've got to help her. Because, because of she, because of he, that's why I have this mark. Amen. You know that the mark is not there today. Why? When Jesus came out of the grave, why did he leave those marks? He is God. He could erase this in a moment. But the Bible teaches us that when he came out of the grave, the man was still there. You said, how? When Thomas was doubting his resurrection, Thomas said, unless I see the nail prints, and then I see the sign where the soldier, the Roman soldier trusted his spear, and I see the leg where they nailed him to the cross, unless I see the mark, I will not believe. But he says, one week later, when Jesus showed, Thomas was there, Jesus showed, and he showed the palms. When he ascended to heaven, he went with all those marks at the right hand side of the throne. One day, when we go there, we will look at those marks and know what he did for me and you. Yeah. The marks will be there eternally. We will always look and know what he did for me and for you. That without his sacrifice, nobody can lay any claim on God. Without that sacrifice, nobody can have any claim on God. Nobody can approach God. Nobody can look at God. He's so holy that a sinful man cannot approach God. But Jesus came to purge us of our sins and give us his garment of righteousness. Now me and you can boldly come to the throne of grace and approach God. God can look at us and call us his children and we can call him Abba, Father. Oh glory, glory, glory. Praise God. Jesus is now exalted at the right hand side of the throne. The script, there is one scripture that says in Acts chapter 2, verse 33, talking about the exaltation of Jesus. Acts chapter 2, verse 33, listening to what Peter speaking by the Holy Spirit said. Listen, hallelujah. Acts chapter 2, verses, let's say verse 33, right? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. He said, Therefore, be by the right hand of God, exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has shared forth this which you now see and hear. The way that I want you to understand is, he was, I mean, he ascended to be exalted, to be crowned as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Everybody wants a crown, but there is no crown without the cross. Everybody wants to get nice testimonies, but there is no testimony without a trial. Are you with me? Amen. Your mess is now going to give you a message. Your testimony is born out of your trials. Jesus' suffering preceded his exhortation. The Christian life involves trials and challenges. Jesus did not just walk through this life and then to be exalted. The Bible talks about his suffering. He was misunderstood. They arrested him. He was beaten. They spit on him. They did all that they could do to him. And they finally crucified him. But that was the worst they could do to him. When Peter had done everything they could, they could do to him, God raised him from the dead. And he ascended to be exalted, to receive a name that is above every other name. But as the name of Jesus, every knee, every knee, Shabbat. Yeah. Hallelujah. So I have news for you. I don't know what you are dealing with. And the Bible says in Acts, Chapter 14, verse 22, put it there for us. Acts, chapter 14. Hallelujah. This is Apostle Paul talking. 
strengthening the disciples and encouraging them to remain true to the faith. We must go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. You see, so when trials come in your life, it is not something strange. It's part of the process. It's part of the journey. As we follow the footsteps of Jesus, we are going to have our own hardships sometimes. And the fact that you are facing hardships does not mean that God has abandoned you. Are you with me? God word said, when you go through the river, I am with you. David said, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. God is not with you only when you are on the mountain top, but God also is with you when you are in the valley, in the moments of your, your valley moments. He is right there with you. Yes, challenges are real. Listen to the words that Paul gave, the Father is giving to the Son before he went to heaven. In fact, in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7, listen to the words that Paul was living with Timothy. He said, I fought a good fight. I finished the race. And I kept, I have kept what? The faith. We all have our fights in life. Are you with me? He said, I fought the good fight. In, other, in the first, in the first epistle, he said, fight the good fight of faith. But here Paul said, I fought the good fight. I fought temptation. I fought the lust of the flesh. I fought the pride of life. I fought the desire to go back in my former way of life. I fought, I fought it. I resisted it. Get ready to do your own resistance. Resist him. The devil will not leave you alone. The devil will do everything he can to pull you back to the past. But you must stand up like the Apostle Paul said, I fought the good fights. I fought the temptation to smoke again. I fought the temptation to drink again. I fought the temptation to enter into illegal sexual relationship. I fought it. I fought to release myself to the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. I fought it. I fought the temptation to be angry, the temptation to be jealous, the temptation to be, you know, to be full of pride. I fought it. I fight. And we must all continue to fight. Amen. The Christian life involves fighting. If you don't fight, before you realize, you will be where you are not supposed to be, and your eyes open. How did this happen to me? How many of you have experienced the temptation to fight not to go back to your old life? How many of you have experienced that? The temptation, the devil will come and say, oh, today you don't go to church. Only one week is nothing. Fight the good fight. Are you with me? Yes. Fight. I'm not saying go and fight. The Bible says I need to fight. So I need to fight you as my husband. I need to fight you as my mother. I need to fight you as my father because the Bible says I should fight. No. He is talking about the good fight. The good fight of faith. Fight. Anything that will draw you away from Jesus, see that as your enemy. Yeah. Where there is a fighting, there is an enemy. You don't fight with your friends. Yeah. We fight with our enemies. Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. So anything that want to that want to hinder your relationship with Jesus, see that as your enemy. Don't compromise. There was a brother many years ago. We were coming from the church. And I understand that he had, he had a lot of beer in the fridge. So I told him, I told him, why are you feeling yourself with all this alcohol? He said, but the Bible teaches us. That is what he said. Jesus didn't talk about alcohol. It was only Paul. So to him, the writings of Paul and the sayings of Jesus are not the same. I help him to understand. I said, don't let Jesus come to see you in this situation. Don't be like 
the five virgins, they were all waiting for the coming of Jesus. But they were not fully prepared. And Jesus coming took them by surprise. I encourage you, be fully prepared. He can come at any time. The old things are what? Pass away. Leave the past. Leave the past. Leave the rest of your life to please Jesus. Because he will come like a thief. When the time that we don't expect, when you are not ready, even though you are a Christian, you are a child of God, how painful it will be. Be ready. Be ready. Amen. Fight. Be telling to fight anything that will draw you away from the grace of God. Amen. From Jesus. Fight it. And then listen to what he said. He said, I have finished the race. Determine to finish your Christian race. So many people started with us. But now, they are in different places right now, other than church. They started nice in this place. They did everything. But somewhere, they couldn't finish. Paul said, we call him because of the love of this world has forsaken me. Because of things in this world, many have now forsaken their faith. But I'm here to encourage you. Your faith will not be in vain. In, in running, in race, rewards are not given to those who don't finish the race. I was watching a race, one Olympic, Olympic Games, you know. I saw that in the sprint, one guy was hurting, but even though he was last, but he was still running, 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 and they were encouraged until he crossed the line. Because if you don't cross the line, you get no reward. Some of you are hurting, some of you are bruised, some of you are discouraged, disappointed. Some of you are let down and determined to finish the race. The race. Yes. Yes. Say, I will finish it. I will finish it. Yes. And then listen to what he said. He said, I have kept the faith. I lost everything, but I kept the faith. I may have lost my friends. I may have lost my visa. I may have lost my job. I may have lost my employer. I may have lost a big opportunity, but I have kept the faith. I am keeping the faith. I am not going to lose my faith. If I will lose my faith, where will I be? I know that all that I have lost through faith, God can restore to me. Through faith, God will protect me. Through faith, it was not over. I have kept the faith. I encourage you. We move by faith, not by sight. Amen. Keep the Christian faith. Keep your life by faith. Amen. There will be good times and there will be bad times. But keep the faith. Amen. The rockets may be coming. Keep the faith. The siren has gone off. Keep the faith. Rona is deserving, but what? Keep the faith. No matter what. I may not have achieved what I am looking for, but keep the faith. Somebody said that I am not happy. Listen, nobody told you that you are going to be happy all the time. Are you with me? Yeah. Nobody is going to be happy all the time. Life is like climbing mountains. Sometimes you are up. Sometimes you go down. But just because you are in the valley doesn't mean that you will remain there forever. Amen. Your mountain top experience will come. Keep the faith. Amen. And you will also say, like the Apostle Paul, what is left at the end is the crown of righteousness. Amen. There is a crown for overcomers. Amen. Jesus said, Behold, I am coming soon and I have my reward for everyone. Determine not to allow somebody to take your crown. Keep the faith. Keep the faith. In bad times, keep the faith. In good times, 
Keep the faith. Keep the faith. Because God is faithful. God is faithful. You will have different moments in your life. But don't lose your faith. I want to say before I finish. You are going to have some people out of your life. You lose them. And some of them as if you have lost your world. Nobody is more important in your life than to keep Jesus. Amen. Oh, one evangelist, Francis, he gave one story. She, he was ministering, then one woman came for counseling. And he said, I want to share something to you. This woman keep bothering me. This woman keep harassing me. Not that I can also not fight. I can face her. I can also speak more painful words to her. But Jesus in my heart is like an egg. If I drop him, it is like scramble. Egg. You can't do anything because of Jesus. I trust Jesus Amen. to handle what I cannot handle. Keep the faith. And you will see the miracle. Father, I can close your eyes. Jesus. Father, as we are celebrating your resurrection to heaven, to be our representative, to be our high priest before the throne, we pray that the spirit that you released upon your church be revived upon your children. For no one can truly please you without the Holy Spirit. It is your Holy Spirit that will convict and convince. It is your Holy Spirit that guides us into all truth. It is your Holy Spirit that counsel and help us. Spirit of God. Spirit of God. Spirit of God. You are the representative of the Godhead on this earth right now. You are here to carry out. You are here to bring glory to Jesus. These are your persons. These are your children. Glorify Jesus in this house right now. Glorify Jesus in every heart here right now. Jesus. Everybody stand up. Jesus. 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 What a wonder you are. Jesus.